The new domestic engine for light aircraft, the VK-800, is is gradually reducing uncertainties. The Ural Civil Aviation Plant, ZGA, is not only actively developing the power plant, but is also working on three of its modifications simultaneously, the VK-800SM, VK-800S1, and VK-800SP. Let's examine the situation as of the end of May 2025. According to the plant, work on the VK-800 at UZGA has been underway since 2021. The design documentation received the designation O in 2024, indicating that testing confirmed the engine's design. As of May 2025, the engine is undergoing testing. Four prototypes have been built with power outputs ranging from 807 to 877 horsepower. During the development of the VK-800, the Ural Civil Aviation Plant established cooperation with more than 30 Russian enterprises, including those that are part of the United Engine Corporation. To organize serial production of the new engines, Yuzige is building its own new foundry, where blades and some cast components for the VK-800 will begin to be produced as early as 2025. According to the manufacturer, the presence of three modifications under development is due to the fact that the VK-800 is already planned for use on three new aircraft models. These are the single-engine light civil aircraft LMS-901, Baikal, the twin-engine Russian-Belarusian civil LMS-192, Osve, and the Russian training aircraft UTS-800. The engine modifications differ primarily in their control systems. Compared to the previously used American engine on prototype models of the Baikal and UTS-800, the new Russian VK-800 has advantages. The weight of the Russian engine and its specific fuel consumption are lower, while the generated power is higher. These characteristics have been confirmed in a thermobaric chamber and on test benches. In 2025, endurance tests and flights of the VK-800 engine prototype will begin as part of the Yak-40LL flying laboratory. During flight tests, five flights must be completed for each modification, VK-800SM, VK-800S1, VK-800SP. The developers plan to obtain a type certificate for the engine and its propeller by the end of 2025. Thus, the creation of the Russian VK-800 engine took a relatively short time, although Yuzga had not previously undertaken such projects. In 2026, the power plant will enter production. The first LMS-901 Baikal units will go into series production. It is important to note that the above information concerns only the Baikal LMS-901. This document does not refer to any work on installing the VK-800SM on the UTS-800 training aircraft. However, this doesn't mean such work isn't being done or planned. No information about military aircraft may be made publicly available, especially after 2022. Positive updates regarding the VK-800 also include encouraging news about the progress of the light aircraft LMS-901 Baikal, which will become one of the users of the new aircraft engine by the end of May 2025. Several Russian media outlets, encouraged by a single official's comment, had declared the aircraft project dead. This is a project that has involved not only significant financial investment, but also the serious work of a large team of specialists. Work on the LMS-901 Baikal continues at UZGA. No one has shut it down, and the supposed dead end appears to exist only in the mind of someone unfamiliar with the production process. Let's go point by point. The aircraft project began in 2019 with an American engine, and it first flew with that engine in 2022. The certification of the Baikal with the Western engine was initially scheduled for the end of 2024. At this point, it's pointless to debate why a foreign engine was used. The main reason is clear to everyone. Russia's own VK-800 engine was still under development at the time. Three prototype LMS-901 aircraft were built, two flight models and one for static tests. In 2025, these aircraft were handed over to be fitted with the domestic VK-800SM engine and the new AV-901 propeller. By the end of 2025, UZGA will complete the assembly of the third flight prototype. A type certificate for the Baikal with the Russian engine, propeller, and equipment 
will be obtained by the end of 2026. In the meantime, the plant will produce the first five aircraft in 2026 and another five in 2027. The team completed the necessary modifications to the LMS-901 airframe for re-engining with the new Russian VK-800SM between January and April 2025. Specialists from Chaplygin Sibmie Novosibirsk participated in the flight tests to verify the results. Plant representatives emphasized that during preliminary aircraft testing, specialized institutions were brought in to jointly resolve all issues, including the Zhukovsky National Research Center, Chaplygin Sibbe Central Aerohydrodynamic Institute, Gosnaya, and GK Nipes. Among the improvements, control forces in the elevator channel were reduced, and aircraft stability and controllability across the full range of weight and center of gravity positions were improved. All identified issues were resolved. The validity of the design decisions was confirmed during preliminary testing. After being re-engined with the VK-800SM, the LMS-901 Baikal will fully meet its technical specifications and will be ready for certification. The production of the new light single-engine aircraft will begin, as previously mentioned, in 2026. The plant anticipates demand for the aircraft over the next two decades. The plant will increase production volumes after 2027 as demand continues to grow. The plant has refuted claims that the Baikal costs more than the American Cessna Grand Caravan. The base price of the American aircraft, excluding customs and delivery, ranges from $2.2 to $3.4 million per unit. So when you factor in logistics, customs and delivery, the Russian Baikal will definitely be cheaper than its foreign counterpart. The first customer of the serial LMS-901 will be the Russian airline Aurora, which has placed a firm order for 10 aircraft. The plant also has preliminary orders for more than 60 aircraft. Among the organizations that have signed preliminary agreements are Crassavia, Aeroservice, and the Narian Mar United Aviation Squadron. Furthermore, under the current National Civil Aviation Development Program, the state is directing the manufacturer to produce 139 aircraft. Now, do you think LMS-901 can meet its development schedule given the uncertainty after the recent minister's comments? Let us know in the comments. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to our channel.